split across all divisions at the first Kumite. Let's, go. Let's focus on the bantamweight action first. Eric Sanchez hey, hey, faced a hey, tough hey, hey. loss advancing Christian Dexter to the finals. The yellow card didn't help. Jordan Barker stunned with an epic performance and a spinning back fist that almost sent Eric Kuhn to sleep. That could be in a knockout. Securing his spot as well. Moving on to the welterweight division. About to get naked, bro. Alejandro Brugal's determination was clear as he cut five pounds to secure his entry. And he triumphed over the Bear Slayer's top student, Arthur's Carnivals. Andrew Diaz reigned victorious over the Brazilian Michael Sugarbomb Claycomb. Another hard right hand. You've got a chin, for sure. And not to forget the lightning-paced lightweight division. Larson and Lamron's unsuccessful weigh-in led to a rapid restructuring, propelling Franklin Rivas straight to the semifinals. He's set to face Javier Ortega, who earned his second chance from the jury after his loss to Chad Cannon. You are back in the tournament. Speaking of Chad, he'll be clashing with Chance Wingo, the fighter who delivered Kubate's first ever knockout. Hold on tight, the next rounds are coming in hot. Welcome to Miami, where we're all still coming down from the high that was Karate Combat 40. I'm Alex Wenling, and the action must go on because we are on the search for the next big star inside the pet. This is the Kumite. Today, our Kumite fighters move one step closer to earning that coveted Karate Combat contract as we find out who is going to be in the lightweight finals. After today, the pit will be set for all three of our division's finals. But before we dive into those life-changing final battles, get ready for an exciting clash between Eric Sanchez and Eric Kuhn. Despite their setback in the bantamweight division, they're returning to the stage to exhibit their skills once more and leave their mark in the pit. We're kicking off today with Chad Cannon and Chance Wingo, who both dominated in the first round. Let's see if they can do it again. My name is Chad Cannon. I'm going to win the Kumite because I believe that I'm the one that's destined to be here. As a martial artist, I feel like we always have to continue to evolve. I feel like I'm a very adaptable fighter and I can switch in between sport karate and Muay Thai or mix them both together. Chad Cannon has already proven he belongs here with a stellar performance in his first fight, earning him the jury's well-deserved trust and a ticket to the semifinals. It was a close fight. You know, I wanted to be real aggressive offensively. He was a real good counter striker. It kind of changed up my strategy of the fight. Probably going into round two, I was more or like in between counter and offensive fighter. I think it was very close. I love the calf kicks that Chad is strong. It's very smart. When I'm watching them, I don't feel that they are amateurs. This is the third round. Yeah. Ref, we go in for another round. Going into the third round, I'll change up my strategy a little bit and um, came out victorious. And we made a decision and uh, Chad, you're going to the next round. Chad Congratulations, Cannon. Chad Cannon. My name is Chance Rice Wingo. I got this opportunity two weeks ago. Coach Joe said, you're a black belt in karate. You do have experience in MMA fighting. Do you want this? I said, heaven yeah, let's try it out. And here we are. I've always wanted to be on a stage to showcase my martial arts skills that I've learned over, you know, basically 30 years of my life now. Our next fight in the lightweight quarterfinals between Chance Rice Wingo and Saeed Mohammed Hussein. To go against like a national champ karate guy right off the bat, it was very, it was very tough. Some shots from Chance Rice Wingo. It wasn't easy. The guy had some amazing kicks. He had some amazing pressure forward for a karate guy. As soon as the opening bell hit, it was just nonstop forward pressure from Wingo. It was a wild fight. I don't know if this game plan is a good game plan for three minute rounds and to do it three of those. This is what we like to see at Karate Combat. Ref stopped it, what else is there? You know, so, I mean, you can't make the guy continue. 
first round KO for the Spec Ops trained Chance Wingo. Wow. We don't have to really decide because this was a very impressive performance. Chance, you're going to the next round. Congratulations, Chance Wingo. Fight fans, welcome to our first lightweight semifinal match between Chance Rice, Wingo, and Chad Cannon. I'm going to treat this as a hard spar, except this time I don't have to hold back. I can actually go 100%. My strategy for the upcoming fights today, be able to pick my opponent apart, kind of keep them frozen, thinking about what I'm going to do, you know, get them frustrated. In his first fight, Chad Cannon really styled through Javier Ortega. Now he meets a tougher opponent. Fighting out of the red corner is Chance Rice Winko, who TKO'd the US Open champ Saeed Hussein right, in gentlemen. lightning quick speed. Pin. Really Easy pumped for battle. this one. Chad Cannon, a collegiate athlete, the 24 years of karate Round experience, are you the ready? spec ops trained are you ready? Chance Rice Fight. Wingo. Our semifinals get underway. Yeah, I think you see Chad had the, the most variety in his semifinal matchup, or quarterfinal matchup, excuse me, and, uh, and Rice was the only one to finish his fight. So, man, what a clash of styles here. Chance Rice Wingo had not fought for 10 years leading into this Kumite tournament. He went one and one in MMA before that. Here he is, oh. impressing greatly. Big body kick by the cannon. Quick switch kick there. Something you don't see often, right? It wasn't quite a tie kick. It wasn't quite a martial arts kick. It was like almost like a switch jump kick. Talk to me about the range management of Chad Cannon. He is really minding his P's and Q's in there, Ross. You know, I think it's just his athletic background. He was a, a running back in college. You know, he, he ran track. He, he guy does everything. And then the sport karate background of just being so explosive. He's all, he's all, you know, fast switch muscle fibers. And you see it right there with that big reverse punch. Chance Rice Wingo trying to touch the downstairs and get back into this, but Chad Cannon just steadily moving ahead. Again, you're seeing this open stance, right? And we, we see Chad doing what he's supposed to do and attack the rear side. Good right hand from Chad. Chad Cannon mentioned that in his youth, he had a lot of energy, constantly was getting into trouble with teachers and other authority figures. He dialed it back when he became a collegiate athlete. Big spinning whiff right there. And you'd never know it. He's the nicest guy. He's such a good, mild-mannered, very well-spoken. You know, Wingo right now needs to needs to close this gap. This is his opportunity here to throw that sweep. There it is. Beautiful work by Chance Rice. Wingo getting to work with the ground and pound. Stop, 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 stop. And I think that's exactly what we need to see from Wingo. He's got to close the gap. He's got to get this to the ground and start making this more of a dirty fight. If you give Chad the space, he's going to do what he does and put some style on. You can't out karate Chad Cannon, but you can make it dirty and engage the MMA. Oh, big axe axe kick kick again. Boy, he walks into the takedown. Stop, 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 stop. I love how Chance Wingo is capitalizing on these moments here. He is not wasting those mistakes by Chad Cannon. Round one round. comes to a close. Yeah. Exciting first semifinal round here. High awesome. risk, high reward by Chad. You know, he's starting to throw some of those big kicks, big flashy kicks, but we saw towards the end of that round, Wingo taking those takedowns. Let's look at this highlight right here, that jumping kick there. My goodness, it's just one of those guys. He is so athletic. I love the constant movement by uh, Chad Cannon. Let's take it to the jury and get their thoughts on the first round between Chance Wingo and Chad Cannon. Yeah. You know what I like? Whenever Chad moves, he's dangerous. Yep. Mm. Everything yep. he throws. More output he had, more output as well. And uh, strikes, hand strikes. I also feel that like it's not only he's so creative with the strikes, right? Yep. So he's working the leg, the body, the, the, the head. Walk. Because you I never know what to expect. Never yeah, know. that axe kick came from nowhere. From nowhere. From nowhere. I didn't expect it. Yeah. I love it. Veteran referee Chris Inyaki is set for round number two. It does not exist. It is Dojo. He's a young Reese. <laughs> Interesting note about Chance Rice Wingo. His mom ready? is the best Fight. female jockey in the world. His cousin was a state wrestling champion. He comes from an equestrian family, but here he is lighting it up in the Kumite pit. Well, let's see. He's going to have to get on his horse here. See what I did there? <laughs> He's got to get on it. He's got to get in his face and, and close that gap and, and, and take this fight and continue to make it dirty. He was doing it towards the end of that set that first round, so let's see if he carries on. 
Grappling seems to be the path of least resistance for the Spec Ops train. Oh. Chance Ringo, but Jack Cannon shows why he's got that power. Fast twitch, explosive power, and it just comes out of nowhere. Backhand. You know, he's doing a good job of, well, one of the things that you see even professionals sometimes have a hard time doing is varying the intensity of their strikes. If you really watch Chad, he's fainting, touch, 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 and then all of a sudden, bang, you see that firework come out. And again, a state of constant movement, fainting, moving the hands in and out. Winko, he's a shot there on the entry. Yeah, Wingo's starting to get it together a little bit. He's looking more comfortable with the, the different kind of funky style of Chad Cannon. Hand control a little bit here. Again, oh. a switch kick and a takedown again. Chance Wingo brings Cannon to the pit, gets the ground and pound. Three for three, I believe, on takedowns. Yeah, and they all come off of Chad Cannon kicks. So that might be something that Chad would think about, you know, and maybe take, take away those, those big flashy kicks and just keep it a little bit more basic, maybe attack the leg, maybe faint the kick to a punch. Chance, oh, Rice Wingo, down. walking through the fire, too, to secure those takedowns. I mean, Chad Cannon blasting with those right hands, but Wingo undeterred. Yeah, it's what he needs to do, and, and I think that's that special ops mentality, right? Just do what you got to do. Cannon punishing Wingo on the entry. Good kick by Wingo, but Chad Cannon is a tough guy to track down in there. Oh, good right hand by Chad. Stunned him there, and the fight's on. Can it go? Is it going to last the last 10 seconds here? Chance Rice, Wingo, final moments. Can he explode and make some magic happen? Stop. That's right. the end of round number two. Ross Levine, Chad Cannon with some big moments. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, I, you, you saw Wingo start to get things together a little bit, and uh, but it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And that last big shot from Chad Cannon might have swayed the jury. Talking about those juries, let's take it over to them and figure out their thoughts on this second round between Chance Rice Wingo and Chad Cannon. Chance Wingo, Chad Cannons, you left it all out there. Are we going to see another round? We are not going to the third round. All right, well, we'd love to hear your feedback for both of these fighters. Samuel, we'll start with you. Um, great fight. Uh, red corner, you got some great takedowns, some great ground and pound. I reacted to him a lot more than he was reacting to me. Blue corner, amazing work, you know, working the legs, the body, um, the head, you know, you really mixed it up. And that axe kick that came from nowhere, really impressive. I caught him with a good axe kick. Um, you know, it was probably a little close because it did wrap around his head. Yes, that axe kick was very impressive. And whoever wins this will head to the final round to try to get a karate combat contract. President Kovech, give us your thoughts. Chad, you know, like each round, you're getting better and better. You know, I, I told these guys that whenever you move, you're, you're danger. You know, one thing that I'm trying to do is just stay neutrally balanced in my mind and not letting my emotions take over what the ultimate goal is. He definitely had the kicking game on the range, and every time I tried to close the distance, he would whack me with the right cross. Chance, you, you did good. I think uh, you found yourself with a dangerous opponent, but it's a good opportunity to go back to the drawing board and figure out, you know, how to, how to do it when the opportunity comes. The last two fights were wars. I mean, I'm pretty beat up, but I'd love to come back to karate combat and try this again. I, uh, same here, Chance. I, I was waiting for the blitz that you gave in your very first fight. That was a good. You almost didn't punch in this one. You know, the coach said I was going too fast in the first fight, so I tried to slow this fight down, and I slowed down too much. Chad Cannon, uh, the straight punches, the countering, the kicks was great. It was great for you grabbing the kicks and takedowns, so that's for you for the next round. You should, that should be in your head. I heard Ross already talking about maybe you should switch to leg kicks or high kicks, you know, so they're harder to catch, because eventually, you know, they are going to count. But uh, yeah, you putting the combination together as well, I uh, really enjoyed that performance. Some of my higher kicks, we're getting caught so that's something definitely to think about going into further rounds knowing that you know takedowns um, are part of the game so who is it going to be that will continue on for the karate combat contract yeah heading uh, to the final it's definitely one step closer we're gonna go with chat we will go with Chad. You are the first finalist of the Kumite. Congratulations, Chad Cannon, moving on to the finals. Chad Cannon had his hands full with a Spec Ops trained Chance Rice Wingo, but makes it to the finals. 
took this fight on two weeks notice. I wasn't fighting anybody. I was dealing with family issues. My baby passed away in the womb and I wasn't training at all. I was in depression. And the only thing that took me out of it was coach giving me this opportunity. So I'm, I'm just glad that I was able to do it. I just wish I would have, wish I would have won it. So it is what it is. Chad, an impressive performance, but the job isn't done. How are you feeling going into this final round? Actually, um, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, after that first round, I think it was, uh, I had like a little adrenaline dump. I think it's just because it's the first fight. Um, and you know, this fight right here, um, I'm, I'm ready to go right now. Honestly, to tell you the truth, um, I feel good and confident. It's just staying locked in. And now that you're one step closer to that karate combat contract, what is going through your mind when it comes to strategy? Um, you know, you know, kind of like Bass said, uh, you know, my momentum's kind of building right now, so it's it's not getting too confident. Um, you know, staying neutrally balanced, I, I kind of have a feel on what techniques are working really well for me right now. And like I said, my endurance is feeling really good. So, two two minute rounds, that's cake. We definitely love to see you in the flow state, Chad. We cannot wait to see it. The finals coming up next. Yeah, getting that contract is my dream, but you know, right now I'm living my dream. Uh, you know, I've already, I've, it's, it's already happening. So that contract's just gonna be icing on the cake. Congratulations to Chad Cannon for advancing one step closer to joining Karate Combat. Now we shift our focus to the next two fighters already standing pit side. We have Franklin Rivas making his debut, stepping into the pit for the first time ever. He's taking on Javier Ortega, who got a second shot by the jury after losing in the first elimination round. Hi, my name is Franklin Rivas. I'm from Costa Rica. And he's my friend, Lance. He just wants to be part of the video. I've been training martial arts for 16 years. I will prove myself that I can become a professional world champion. Stephen Thompson already gave me my amateur world championship belt. Martial arts has given me discipline, confidence, humility, and a community. It feels amazing to represent your country. My dream since I started uh, doing martial arts, being in a big production, fighting in front of my idols, GSP, Buzz Root thing. They will enjoy one of my fights. That will be amazing. Franklin Rivas was set to face Lassen Elamarani. He could not make weight. He's still, there's not enough time in him, so. Due to the fallout, Franklin Rivas moves directly to the semifinals. This is a big opportunity. I, I feel this is mine since now, I, and I, I want to take it. He's taking on Javier Ortega, who got a second shot by the jury after losing in the first elimination round. My name is Javier Arteaga. I'm a national karate athlete from Venezuela, national team for more than 10 years. Uh, I practice, I start karate at three years old. I'm adapting to karate combat right now and I think I can do a good show and I can be um, one of the, the greatest. I'm cool, I'm good, I'm chill, I'm relaxed, uh, I'm mentally prepared, I did a lot of sacrifice and nothing will stop me. Chad Cannon versus Javier Ortega. I think I'm, uh, I get more shots in target than him. Ortega brought to the pit momentarily. I really love the clash of styles. Big left hook right there from Ortega. Javier, your punches, I felt you were the more schooled boxer. Uncork another one, there it is. Big right hand from Ortega. They're getting the better. You couldn't feel the difference between the pro fight and an amateur fight. Oh, was, nice. I was very impressed. Chad, you're going to the next round. Hey! In this division, from the losers, we will pick one who can come back. I deserve a second opportunity on the pit to show maybe they are the, a mistake on the decision. You both showed great heart when entering the pit, but Ortega, you are back in the tournament. I'm back in the pit and I'm gonna hit more, fight more, and then just get all I have and let's go for it. The Kuwaite Lightweight semifinals continue with Javier Ortega and Franklin Hivas. Pit, I the try line, to be play smart play. when I'm fighting. I try to keep my distance and to set my hands. I like to punch. 
I like more uh, striking and kicks. So maybe I'll surprise one of my a good kick, like fly kick or something like that. We don't play karate. We have to fight. <laughs> Out of the blue corner, Costa Rican, born and bred, the five-time IKF champion is here in the Kumite. He takes on the individual that was saved from the quarterfinals by the jury. Second opportunity for Javier Ortega. It's going to be an interesting Gentlemen, one. Gentlemen, enter know, we, the pit for me, please. We saw a lot from Ortega already. Had a great fight. You know, Stand just back. ran into kind of the, the, the mowing down of Chad Cannon. Now, but also, you he had great power, was really throwing Stop. heavy shots. And, uh, yeah, you know, Rivas is, is probably the most experienced right now. And I'm really curious to see how this ends up going. IKF victories between 2012 and 2016. He said that karate combat is the dream. It's currently his reality against Javier Ortega. And again, that power of Ortega, if he lands, could be lights out, Ross Levine. Yeah, you can see him just uncorking these shots. You know, we've talked about this a couple times here in the uh, in the Kumite, just the size difference, right? It's the same weight class, but boy, they, they don't look like it. Big connection right there. The right hand of Ortega bouncing off the skull of Franklin Hivas. Hivas just sort of stalking his way in, but he's taking a lot of damage, Ross. Yeah, I, I'd love to see Ortega straighten those punches out, you know, a little wider. The wide shots allows the shorter fighter to get close, and that's where Rebus wants to be. All right, so I think just keeping it straight down the pipe, maybe use his jab a little bit more. I'd love to see that. And for Rebus, let's get those kicks going. He, he mentioned his low kick being a strength of his. I'd love to see that happening a little bit more, but man, that power. Javier. Excuse me, Franklin Hiva, 16 years of training overall, said that when he walked into the gym, the thing that he loved the most was the screams that he heard. Might be screaming here tonight, Ross. He might be if he keeps taking punishment like this, for sure. I think he needs to be a little bit more slick in the way he enters. And for Javier Ortega, he's got that quarterfinal experience. He's been in the pit before, and he knows that this is his second opportunity, last chance to get that karate combat contract. Absolutely. He's, you know, so far so good on that stance, right? He's really making it work for him. He's being patient. He's staying long, and Hivas can't quite get the inside. Talk to me about that high guard of Franklin Hivas. Listen, it's what he needs to do. It's what he's doing before and after, though. You know, you can't work sit the there down. and counter. Work the tight down. Great use of the pit wall for Lico, Ortega. Lico, Lico, Lico. Veteran referee Sam Amidi calls a conclusion this first round. Franklin Hivas pressuring forward, but Javier Ortega showing that patented power. Ross Levine, your thoughts? Yeah, Ortega's, I mean, not giving him a chance to really do anything. He's really stymieing him, not just with the range, but the power, the combinations, and Hivas just couldn't quite get it going. We talked about his high guard. High guard was looking good, but he's got to do something before that. Let's take it to the jury and figure out their thoughts on round number one between Franklin Hivas and Javier Ortega. Um, yeah, I think uh, Rivas uh, needs more offense. He needs to, you know, he throws that uh, low kick like a jab out, the whole tight inside low kick. I think he needs more offense. He needs uh, uh, offense. He needs to strike more. Uh, and Ortega is doing good with the combinations. I would take more straight punches. He throws in an angle. So if you're moving your head back, it's, it's going to miss. If he makes it more straight, yeah. it could do more damage. I think Ortega is doing great. Um, for Franklin, he needs to understand these are two-minute rounds. Yeah. There's no 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 reason to, to wait. Yep. Well, Welcome, Shaka. I totally agree. Better referee Sam Amini gets going for this second round between Hivas and Ortega. You know, outside the pit, we asked Franklin Hivas what he likes, and he said his dogs. He's got to turn into a dog right now. He's got to get <laughs> something going. You know, I think that low kick alone is just not going to solve the puzzle of Ortega. It's, it's not going to help him get past the power. I'd love to see some body kicks like that. You know, establish a little bit more, some contact, and shut down those hands. Oh, big connection right there from Ortega. Right on the chin of Hivas. You got to think, if you're Javier Ortega... You just put it all out in this second round. Yeah, I mean, he, he's doing a great job of just maintaining his space. He's moving well. 
You know, Reba's starting to feel a little urgency here, though. Oh, beautiful sweep from Ortega. And with the ground and pound as well. Javier Ortega looking like a rejuvenated fighter here in the semifinals. Completely different from that quarterfinal appearance. Yeah, definitely high-level stuff. I mean, you're seeing he's starting to open up his game plan. One of the criticisms we had in his first fight was that he just didn't open up. He didn't throw enough. He just sat back on the bomb. He's throwing uppercuts, straights. He's throwing sweeps, the front kick. He's really putting it all together. And, you know, unfortunately, for even the experience on paper doesn't always match up with what you see. They're great low kicks, but that's not going to win this fight. The Venezuelan national champion, Javier Ortega, impressing greatly, but Franklin Rivas still has time on the clock to make something happen. Yeah, and that was the right thing right there from Rivas. He, he hit that body shot, and it stopped the right hand from coming. I think he needs to do that again and uncork a combination and make something happen here. Good shot by Rivas, finally letting loose. Yeah, the body kick's working for him. I'd love to see him keep that up a little bit. Franklin Hivas has been impressing with the pressure. Good right hand oh, from Hivas. Ortega momentarily stunned. Last 10 seconds. Can Franklin Hivas stop the juggernaut? Javier Ortega. Right, 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 right. No clean shit. That's fine. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Round number two comes to a close. Ross Levine, what an action pack effort yeah. by Javier Ortega. Yeah, I mean. Kid, you, you can't you can't take away the last you know 15 20 seconds there it finally started to see like Rivas was getting the hang of it he was attacking the liver he was throwing the body kick shutting down the boxing we started to see that shift right Oof, we're gonna go to the third round what's it gonna look like I don't know we'll take it to the jury and see if we get that third and final round between Franklin Hivas and Javier Ortega no. I learned a lot in the first round. In the second one, I think uh, I was thinking more and I was doing a better strategy. I would love to because she started doing the action, really? but no, 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 but no. based on, on, on truth. I knew I lost the first round. The second round, I felt like I was a little bit uh, up in the cards. At the last, the the last moment, yeah. you started doing so. We're, we're not scoring, so like if we really want to see a third. I'm not here only for the contract. I'm here to show who I am, where I come from, and and the best is here right now. Yes. Just would like to see what happens yes. yeah. the third. The contract, it will mean the, the world to me. Javier Ortega is here for redemption after losing his first round, being brought back by the jury in Frank Lisivas. Man, you guys put on a show tonight. Let's see if we're going to a third round. We are going to a third round. But right. Let me explain. Um, Ortega did great in the first round, but he already fought in the first round of the tournament. And uh, Franklin did really good in the second round, so we're giving him a chance to showcase what he has. Yes. And it's good for him because now we can put more pressure on him as well, because officially, I gotta tell you, the first two rounds, I would give it to him. But now we're gonna find out also he, if he can continue what he's doing. So it's a, it's a good check for you, and you should start fighting right away as you did at the end of round number two. The last 30 seconds of round number two, if you go going to this round with that mentality, that will give you a good chance to move on. And in the pro rule set, it is always three rounds, except you finish the fight early. So you've got a chance now, both of you, to prove your point. Good luck, gentlemen. We'll see you in there. Third and final round ahead for Franklin Hivas and Javier Ortega. I'm not complaining there. I mean, I would love to see from Franklin Rivas. He's got to get right back to work, attack the body with that leg. You saw him hurt. Ortega, he's got to establish his jab, go back to his range. You ready? You ready? Let's go. I don't think there's another combat sports organization where you hear in round, you know, feedback from the jury, what they want. Each guy knows the assignment. We'll see who can execute. And what better jury, what better jury to have than the, the great Boss Root, a guy who's been there in all of these types of situations, the president of the league and a fighter who just fought recently in KC40 and Samuel Erickson. So, I mean, we got the great advice from all these fighters. They got the advice from us, and let's see what happens here. Big power from Ortega. Both guys landing in the pocket. Ortega eating a shot downstairs. Franklin Hivas walking through the flames of Javier Ortega. I'll tell you what, Ross, if Boss Rutten told me to jump, I would ask how high. It was getting chilly right before this fight started, and it is, it is heating up right now.
And again, the pressure of Franklin Hivas. He is in the face of Javier Ortega, and now he's letting loose. Wow, and man, you know, this is what it is. This is what it's all about, right? These guys have an opportunity to move on and get a pro contract here. This is what we love to see. Look at that body kick again from Rivas. Javier Ortega cut 18 pounds in one week for this opportunity. Franklin Hivas has traveled a far way. Not to lose, but to get that contract. We'll see if he can do it. First big use of the pit wall. He's styling a little bit. Franklin's picking it up. Franklin Hivas. Let's go. A couple kicks downstairs. Let's go. Is Ortega starting to fade? Oh, boy. He's slowing down. Can Franklin Hivas turn up the pace even more midway through this third and final round? I mean, this is it right here, right? You have to be able to, your mind is telling you all the time, just stop, take a break, it's okay. And you have to be able to override the system and just go for broke and do what you gotta do. Javier. Work to take down, work to take down. Ortega defeated once before. Franklin Hivas down on the scorecards. He Works needs to, to put a stamp on this third round. 10 seconds to go for this contract. Stop. Hivas and Ortega go the distance. Ross Levine, who would you give this fight to after three emphatic rounds? I, I got to tell you, man, I, I love the way that Franklin came out. It was those, those first 15, 20 seconds was mayhem. And then you saw Javier fade and Franklin good, good, good. slowly start to take it over. What about you? It's going to be an interesting, right? We saw the jury really valued the last moments of round number two for Hivas. But Javier Ortega, when he connects, there is a palpable impact. We sent it inside to the jury to find their thoughts on this three-round war between Franklin Hivas and Javier Ortega. That third round definitely did not disappoint. Jury, we go to you guys for the decision. My opening was um, kind of short, so he was coming too much to my distance, and I take advantage of that. The thing is that he has a little more experience in the pit. I think that gave him a little of advantage. Javier Ortega, you're going to the final. Javier Ortega advances to the final. The comeback kid, Javier Ortega, defeated in the quarterfinals, now finds himself on the precipice of a karate combat contract. Javier, you lost your first round. You were chosen to be brought back. How does it feel now that you got the win and you're going into a final against someone you've already faced? Um, I think uh, the first round teach me a lot and I'm ready to do it, okay? So I'm just gonna show uh, my, my best and let's go for it. And you've definitely seen the most action in the pit here today. Many, many rounds. Are you at least having fun in there? Uh, so I love it. Okay, so let's go. We can't wait to see you in the finals. Congratulations, Javier. The rematch between Chad Cannon and Javier Ortega in our lightweight finals. Up next, Ross. After losing his first fight and then being saved by the judges, Javier Ortega won his fight and locked himself into the finals and now has the chance to win the karate combat contract. In the lightweight semifinals, Franklin Hivas lost by decision. Let's see his take on his performance. In the third round, I felt like I was slightly better than him, but the, the jury, it's, they, they have the, the last word. Yeah. I have to watch the fight and, and, and learn from my mistakes. And that's it, keep working. Fighting in the pit, it's crazy, definitely. It's, it's different being in the, in the wall. It's like, I don't know, it's a, a, crazy, a crazy experience. It's my dream fighting here in front of my idols, proving my skills against the best fighters in the world. If there's another committee, if they invite me, I will love to be here, definitely. The finals are now set, but buckle up because we still have one more fight before we get there. Eric Sanchez and Eric Kuhn both got defeated in the bantamweight elimination round, but were given the opportunity to show what they're made of and fight for the tournament's third place. In the battle for redemption, may the better Eric win. My name is Eric Kuhn. I'm from St. Albans, West Virginia. I, I'm in the gym probably a good six, seven hours a day in total. A while back, all I was told is I need to get some more experience, get some stuff rolling. Junior USA team qualifier, world champ experience. And I feel like I've done that enough to where I've earned this spot now, and then I'm going to keep earning every position from now on. Fight! 
Uh, game plan was stick and move and keep, just keep moving up well. Parker takes the center, but Kuhn goes high with the kick. Kuhn was doing really good with the kicks, but I think you're more of a counter fighter. I, I need to move more, stay more active. Neither guy has landed super clean to round oh, one. Back fist. Might have to go see the dentist after that one. I didn't feel he was giving me everything he had, and I obviously wasn't giving him everything I had. If I would have, I would have taken that fight. Uh, I've never fought in a pit before like that with the walls there. Is anyone going to use the wall here? Kuhn might not be using it, but he's certainly on it, Ross. He kept me there, and I just wasn't able to figure out a way to push off. The Barker pressure slowly getting to Kuhn. First round was close, but I think it's safe to say that he dominated that second round. Yeah, I wish I could have just done more, landed more. I didn't get to land as much as I should have. Uh, I was being timid with my shot. You should do a little bit more with the hands. Congratulations, Jordan Barker. Uh, I felt the decision was fair. There's a lot of shoulda, coulda, woulda's I could say, but at the end of the day, I didn't get the job done, so back to the drawing boards on that one. My name is Eric Sanchez. I have about three knockdowns of a Superman punch. Bantamweight some weight. Round one. Are you ready? Fight! Fighting in the pit was electrifying. Sidekick right off the bat from Sidekick Sanchez. Sanchez needs to work on combinations. Everything that he throws is singles, pretty much. I think he felt that power right off the bat. Oh, he's feeling it again. But you just can't get rid of Sanchez. He's sticking in there. Excellent land right there with that left hand. Yeah, quick combination. I mean, that's the key right there, right? Stop, stop, stop. stop. Hey, 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 hey. Up, up, up. You right there? Yeah. I guess that was my fault for not noticing that both of my knees were on the ground. Getting a yellow card, Ross. You got two knees down. Oh. You can't hit them. And I say stop, you gotta oh. stop. I thought the decision was uh, warranted because of the yellow card. Eric Sanchez started to climb up and get it done in the second round there. I definitely think I won that second round. I ended the round on top. Stop. Yeah, one to one. Eric, you came back a little bit. The, the yellow card didn't help. Dexter, you move on in the tournament. Heck of a fight, and you know it's not going to be the end for Eric Sanchez. Yeah, it was an awesome experience getting to get in there. I wish I would have seen my knee. One last impression to be made in our bantamweight third place fight between Eric Kuhn and Eric Sidekick Sanchez. One thing's for sure, Ross, Eric's going to win. Eric is going to win, but which one? I'm a young fighter. I am nowhere near the peak, but you know, I want to show that I'm the dominant fighter here. Getting the karate combat contract would have been a lot, but at the end of the day, I, I made those mistakes and uh, I'll fix those. Out of that blue corner, West Virginia zone, junior USA team member, Eric Kuhn seeking redemption. And out of the red corner, sidekick Sanchez, who again trains under Brian Ruth Ross Levine. No better person to have in your background. Yeah, solid, solid Basically coaching here. You know, I, this is going to be a, a curious fight. One of the, the, the comments that we had about our crew was he just didn't quite get going. So fight. he's got an opportunity now to show out, show us his skills, and make a good impression on these jury. Referee Chris Imyoki gets us going for this one. Kuhn lost to Barker in his quarterfinal bout. Christian Dexter beat Eric Sanchez. Each guy has one final fight here to make a lasting impression. Kuhn lands early. Yeah, I like the front kick from Eric Kuhn there, keeping the range on the kind of the, the faster, quicker Eric Sanchez. But you know what? I am going to say a little disappointed. Sidekick Sanchez did not open with a sidekick. We might have to rip that nickname from him. Eric Kuhn really active off of his back with those up kicks as well, mitigated all of the ground and pound from Sanchez. That's what you're supposed to do. You know, you got to make sure if you're going to be in that position, you have to keep yourself safe, whether that's, you know, closing the gap by pulling yourself closer and controlling the arm so they can't ground and pound, or use that up kick to do some damage and keep your space. Three seconds, too. It's not a ton of time, so you got to choose one and stick to it. Eric Sanchez here in the center. Eric Kuhn whiffs on that one. One of the things that we saw Eric do really well, Eric Sanchez do in his first fight, was he was really giving a lot of feints. He was throwing that lead leg sidekick. Not as much of that in this round. It might be a little of the fatigue, but he is going to the body and changing levels, which I love to see, especially in amateur fighters. You don't see that a lot. Good kick by Eric Kuhn. Now some punches, but Sanchez brings him down. Stop, stop, stop. Similarly, though, not a lot of ground and pound from Eric Sanchez. Kuhn doing a great job of mitigating. Absolutely. Make him out now. Press it. Press it. Press it.
Seems like this is the last opportunity for both of these gentlemen to make an impression on the jury. Ross Levine, how would you want to do it? Yeah, I mean, you have to go for broke here. And, uh, like we were talking about in some of the other fights, you know, especially you've only got two rounds to make an impression. You have two rounds, two minutes in the amateur rule set. And 10 seconds left here. You got to get busy. You got to go to work and make things happen here. Final moments of round number one between Eric Kuhn and Eric Sanchez. A collision to close out those first several minutes. Ross Levine, your takeaway. Yeah, much more action from Eric Kuhn here than it was in his first fight. Um, Definitely looking good. I'd like to see him mixing it up. And certainly with Sanchez changing levels, going to the head, going to the body, that mix-up is what it's all about. So it's, it's a nice clash of styles. I like yeah, this matchup. Okay. Let's take it to the jury to find out their thoughts on round number one between Eric Kuhn and Eric Sanchez. Yeah, I just feel that both of these guys came in here to really show who's the better one this time. Um, and uh, I guess they have a lot of pressure from their, both have lost their fights, you know, so they really want to make a statement and uh, I think that's clear when you watch the fight. Yep, I think Sanchez was smart coming in with the right, good cost to the body and the left to the head, he used it a few times, like three times, and the first two times worked, so that's nice. Uh, I think the more kicking we had there from Kuhn, so it's going to be interesting to see what the fight's going to be. Second round will be important. Yep. Veteran referee Chris Mnocchi gets us ready for round number two in this bantamweight third place bout. Round two, are you ready? Are you ready? Fight! Eric Kuhn built himself to us as just a small town guy trying to make the dreams happen. He's got one more round with which to do it. Sanchez similarly. Yeah, you know, it's tough, too, because this this is not a decision by the jury. This is a fight that's going to the judges' scorecard. And in a round that's so close, you have to just go all out in this round. It looks like they're doing it here with a little bit of ground action. Sort of a head and arm throw right there from Eric Kuhn. Fight. Excellent work by Imyoki. Again, best in the business. That referee is. Eric Kuhn backed into the corner. Sanchez, sort of a pedestrian start here in this second round. Yeah, he's doing a good job controlling the space, but he's not making the most of it here. Getting on top, though. Nice knee on belly here. And he's laying down some of that groundwork. Face each other. Better ground and pound, better positioning. Great adjustment. You know, that first round we saw Eric Kuhn extending his legs. And here, Sanchez was able to pass the legs, take knee on belly, and do some damage. That's what you like. You got to think what the cardio of Eric Kuhn might be. He's taking some shots to the midsection. Volumes drastically decreased. Yeah, he's still doing well in the clinch situation. And a high kick as well. And then a left by Sanchez. Stinging strikes from both fighters. Excellent combination right there from Kuhn. And a throw. Nice side throw there. Couldn't maintain the top up. position. Up. I want to mention that Eric Sanchez had three fights fall fight. apart this year. Fight camps completed for all three of those, but the fights didn't materialize. So people talk about staying ready and you don't have to get ready. Eric Sanchez certainly staying ready. That's the way to do it. You know, you always, this is not an off-season sport. You know, you got to be ready all the time, all year round. And we're seeing it. You know, he's really putting the pressure on, trying to take this over. Last 10 seconds here. Can Sanchez put a stamp on this? Or will Kuhn come alive? A bit of a ground entry and some grappling to close out this excellent two-round affair in our bantamweight third place. Bound Ross Levine, your thoughts? Yeah, what a beautiful fight. I mean, round one, round two, they both look so similar. You know, a lot of action. I, I got to say, in that last round, there was a, a 20-second period where we saw some amazing shots from both fighters. Here was one of them, a straight right hand from Eric Kuhn, followed up right away by a nice side throw there. Great grappling by both individuals. Sanchez with some good head movement there as well. A bit of an outside trip attempt by Kuhn. I like that in their, their last impression here in Karate Combat. They're mixing it up. They're really showing all the different wrinkles they have. It's what you got to do, man. You, you got to show all your all, every facet to the game, and, and these guys really turned it up. Um, you know, sometimes you look at these third-place fights, and you're like, oh, they both lost. But, man, that was honestly one of the best performances we've seen today. Let's take it to the jury. See the judges are asking for a third round between Eric Kuhn and Eric Sanchez. Hello? You ready, fighter, are you ready? Are you ready? Round three, fight! 
The judges decided we get some more action between Eric Kuhn and Eric Sanchez. Big head kick to open things up from Kuhn. I love it. That's the way to set the tone right off the bat, man. You know, you, I love the decision to go to a third round. I thought that was the right call. We got to see the big action here. Way to open the third round with a head kick that connects from Eric Kuhn. Highly competitive is West Virginia zone Eric Kuhn. Sanchez. Another head kick. Here we go. And a bit of a grappling entry. Kuhn didn't get the better of it. Sanchez kind of taking stop. pictures. Ross Lane in this third round. Yeah, he's got to get moving. You know, it's in a two-minute round. You already got hit with two big head kicks. It's time to turn it up a notch. He's got to take control in this, what is probably the final minute of this round here. Deep press by Eric Kuhn. Sanchez on strikes. Brings him down. Stop, 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 Once again, stop, stop, excellent up kicks, up. evaded the damage, but Kuhn might be gassing out right here, Ross. Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of energy to throw the big kicks. Sanchez did exactly what we asked for him to. Now, I don't know if he's hearing us or he's listening to the coach or he's just excited to, to get this third round going, but he's putting it together here. Sanchez, not content with a decision victory. Seems like he wants to stop Eric Kuhn. Up. Hey, Eric, yeah, hands on the hips, never a good sign. Definitely shows you're tired, but hey, listen, tired doesn't matter anymore. You got to go. And equipment malfunctions don't matter either. You got an opponent in front of you, you got to make it work. Sanchez back in on the grappling. Kuhn controlling posture, Ross. Yeah, he, you know, this is exactly what Sanchez needs to do if he expects to win this fight. Even if he's tired, he's got to close the distance. And remember, effective aggression is high on the scoring criteria. So if you can nullify those big kicks, you gotta do it. Final 10 seconds in this third and final round. Eric Kuhn and Eric Sanchez. Sanchez has come alive in the final moments of this fight. Unfortunately, no sidekicks from Sidekick Sanchez, but did he do enough in that final round to make it happen? You know, he ate a couple of head kicks in the beginning, but that second half of the round, we saw him pile on the aggression. He started closing the gap and really took away all the opportunities for Eric Kuhn to do any damage. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the judges think from this one. Tough one to score, Ben. Definitely an intriguing affair in our third place bantamweight bout. We take it to the jury to get their thoughts on that three-round war between Eric Kuhn and Eric Eric Sanchez. The battle of the Eric's was intense. Now we go to our jury. What were your thoughts on that fight? Yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say on KC 38. We had the battle of the Brunos. Now we had the battle of the Eric's. Uh, I really enjoyed the fight. Uh, I think Eric, you did great in the beginning, and Eric, you did great uh, at the end. Uh, so uh, both Eric's, you did you did great. Now it's up to the judges and their scorecards of what the decision is. Yeah, I think it was great. It was much better than the first fight. Listen to the instructions, came in with great strikes. I like the white body shot with the hook to the head. I landed a few times. And by the way, I love the combination. Also the other way around. Just try that one time, left hook, right body. It works all the time. You also listen to the instructions. You know, you got way more kicks. You landed a few high kicks. That was really nice. So uh, the striking was there as well. Started fading a little bit at the end. Right, little, but that's, that's an easy fix. That's a uh, run a few hills. <laughs> and Samuel, any final thoughts before we head to the judges' scorecards? No, I just think uh, both fighters grew into the fight. I mean, one of them had the first round very clearly, and the second one had the second round very clearly, and now uh, the third round was, uh, you know, both really went for it. So I'm excited to hear the decision from the judges. Uh, I definitely feel like I won round one and two. I don't think I should have won to the third in the first place, but uh, it happens. I'm not going to lie. When I heard it was going to go to the third round, I was a little surprised. But then I was like, this is good for me. Let's do it. Let's work. Let's make another round. I want to show that I'm the dominant fighter here. The envelope. <laughs> yeah. The judges' scorecards are in the hands of our league president. Adam, what is the results? We got the decision. And the winner is... The third round, man, started off feeling right. Everything was putting together right. Uh, he was pretty quick, but I was beating to the punch on each punch. He was just getting a little fatigued. He was doing a really good job of, you know, holding me down so I couldn't get my ground and pound in. I was trying to be smart, trying not to rip out of it, because I was like, I'm not getting out of this in the next two seconds, so I'm just gonna take the take the takedown and move, move on. Eric Sanchez. Impresses in his final appearance here at the Karate Combat Pit, claims third place in the Bantamweight Kumite Tournament.
You know what, third place is, is nothing to, you know, shake your hat at. Do I believe I'm ready for a karate combat contract? Yes, 100%. If there's a Kumite 2 and my name gets invited, I'll be the first motherfucker here ready to weigh in and fight. And that's a fact. And I'll come out next time with a contract. There's no answers but that. Congratulations, sidekick Sanchez. How special is it to have Boss Rutan compliment you like he does? This is insane. This is crazy. I'm in Miami. I'm fighting for karate combat. Some of the most famous strikers in the world are talking about my striking technique. I am so, I have one word, gratitude. And you have Ross Levine there breaking down your fight. After a performance like that, I know you're, it's for third place, but you got to be pretty proud of yourself. Uh, I'm pretty proud with uh, how I was able to perform today. It was uh, that first fight that I had, I was able to learn from the mistake that I made in terms of having both my feet on the ground, or both my knees on the ground, and ground and pounding. I got that yellow card for that, so that was a little frustrating, and that kind of like threw me off a little bit. But I came into this, this round, or this fight, and I was like, I really need to get that together. I'm going to look for more trips, and I'm going to look to, I'll try to box a little bit more this time rather than just throw my side sidekick still made the sidekick work you know sidekick Sanchez but uh, I'm really proud of the fact that I was able to take this basically on a week's notice come down here and show the people of karate combat that I'm the real deal I'm a young fighter I'm only an amateur still and you're going to be seeing more of me you have a lot of charisma you have that great <laughs> attitude that magnetic energy I love it we cannot wait to see what's in the future for you thank you thank you so much uh, thank you to karate combat thank you to everyone uh, absolutely we'll see you Oh, yeah, you want to see it? Yeah. It's for you, boss! Yeah. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Good job, man. I've seen this somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You can see me in that pit any day, any week, on any notice. I'm going to be in there. Thank you so much, Ice. With the semifinals complete, we are one step away from someone getting that contract. On the next episode of the Kumite, we'll hand out contracts to the newest members of Karate Combat. For Boss, Adam, Samuel, Ben, and Ross, I'm Alex Wendling. See you next time in the pit. Coming up next on the Kumite. They met in the first round. Now they see each other again. I'm here and standing up and ready for a battle. Are you ready? A lot is on the line for me. This is the final. Fight! Oh, oh spinning back fist drops him! I don't think I've ever seen so many spinning back fists. He's, he's making it dirty, he's making it gritty. One more <laughs> Exactly. One, One more round. round. You throw that flashy kick, you get taken down and punished for it. Not the same fight at all. Nope. One of these gentlemen will have their hopes shattered. This fight was extremely aggressive. This is exactly what karate combat is looking for. He needs to put it together now, otherwise he will lose. So far, no warning. Somebody needs to make a stamp.